Thanks, Freak. Last time we spoke, Jet, we kind of talked about how maybe the aggression would maybe die down. Maybe they'll be down. more subdued. Like, <laughs> yeah. They're not going to do crazy and then, stuff. And then they come out with an Assassin Fizz top lane, and they do a turret dive, at, the teleport turret dive at level three. I mean, it seems like these teams are now, they're bloodthirsty, yeah. and they're going to fight tooth and nail for this victory here. Well, especially Team 8, for one. I, I think back all the way to the first time I even saw Team 8 play. I don't remember when it was. It was some online tournament. I think I saw Cali Trolls top lane on Vladimir going like 17-0 and 0 or something crazy. Like, the dude plays things that other people aren't necessarily playing, and he plays them well. Maybe if you played the Mundo versus Fizz matchup 100 times and you have like a 2v1 against Fizz, you're going to beat him up a little bit. But this time, as a surprise pick that Curse Academy wasn't expecting, he destroyed that game. Right. And so then the question is, what does Curse Academy do against that? Mm -hmm. Because you don't have the experience or the practice. So is that one game enough information to say we can make adjustments and play around it? Or again, you go back to that age old, like, what's, what's the counter? Mm -hmm. Ban it. It's tricky. The momentum is completely gone. Uh, it's very common to see like a backdoor sweep in situations like this, where you see the first game go to a team in a really close back and forth game, and then as soon as the game, as soon as the series breaks, which I think we just saw, we saw the series break two close games and a really one-sided one. Uh, teammate threw their first curveball. Curse Academy now kind of has to respond to it, but I don't know if they can adjust with any of their bands. There's a lot they have to figure out in this very short time we have between games. Let's look at where that first momentum shift happened in mm -hmm. this game, about 17.30 into the game in the bot river. We saw a nice four for two. We go ahead and roll this clip out here. Yeah, just start rolling. You can see the teleport coming in from Fizz, and he beat Mundo to the punch in a lot of ways. He gets in there first. Even if he doesn't land his shark, the damage is kind of done in the sense all the distraction he is doing right now burns pretty much all of impactful stuff and then it allows right here Yasuo comes into this fight really late it allows him to clean up at this point he waited for impactful to rocket jump in you could kind of see it coming he solution was looking one step ahead right there because you knew that Tristana was bloodthirsty there it's like he's oh my god he's gonna get the resets he's gonna start hopping around and killing everyone and he just waited for the spot of the Tristana jump, threw the Yasuo Tornado, killed him, and ended up getting the triple kill. And both the Yasuo and the Fizz just kind of went nuts after that fight. Right, that kind of started that, you know, momentum train going mm -hmm. that, that they carried through very well for the rest of the game. And we have to point out the fact that Cali Trolls played his Fizz very well in a carry position. You got those early kills, he looked for assassinations around the map and made plays. I mean, he was taking a lot of attention from the other team and as um, Zyrene pointed out, in the team fights, was comfortable using all of his cooldowns on the Zillion in order to force quick decision making in terms of using that ultimate either on himself or on a priority target on his team, hoping to make use of it. And it was mainly just forcing Curse Academy into decisions they weren't comfortable making. Curse Academy had to start panicking because they didn't really know where the Fizz would take them. As far as top lane scaling goes, you're not going to get someone who scales as aggressively as a Fizz because he removes the Mundo scaling, which is normally the calling card of Mundo. And as soon as Fizz got going, they just had to start going crazy, which is why this game ended up actually being a much larger goal lead in what was kind of a close game because of the decision-making that they forced Chris Academy into. And a perfect opportunity for us to jump into our second replay, which is the ace at 27 minutes and 30 seconds because we see yeah. Fizz pump out a ton of damage here. I've heard a lot of teams on the comms that we get to listen to in LCS when they show them on stream, like, let's do a base race, we're behind. What's the worst that could happen? We lose the game. Oh well, we're losing anyway. That's what Curse Academy was trying to do here. Let's just roll the clip. You can see the Yasuo wasn't even there, but they're like, let's turret dive. St. Fish has had the right idea, decided to jump in on this one, but the right idea didn't even matter at this point. We're gonna watch this one again. Obviously, we backed up a little bit too far. St. Fish dove in, but you need to just watch Cali Trolls. He's the one who cleaned up on this fight. They can't jump on a Fizz because he has his playful trickster. He landed a shark. I mean, Impactful just got wrecked completely in this fight. Nothing he could do once the shark landed on him. Fizz will one-shot him. And then Chris, who is the tank, gets the healing debuff and also the percent health damage from multiple sources. Impactful even died before the shark damage came out. <laughs> the shark stopped him mid-jump, but the damage actually didn't come through until after he killed him with a Q. Right. It, did, it did, however, put some damage onto the Mundo, and then we saw him clean up that fight there. Mm -hmm. Something else I want to point out with Team 8 is earlier we were criticizing 
uh, the Nocturne build a little bit in the, in the earlier game where they had Maokai and a Nocturne in a full tank scenario right. with not enough damage to follow up and beat a hyper carry mm -hmm. team. Here, however, though, he utilized that same tank build but to a lot greater effectiveness because he had an Assassin Fizz to back him up. One thing that I've definitely noticed watching this series is how good Porpoise Pops is on Nocturne. Even though it's somewhat easy for him to do, the way he always positions himself to fear tether in the perfect direction is actually a leap I haven't seen a lot of Nocturne players making. And even though he's doing the Lizard Elder first, which I said before, can be good, as long as he's using it in the right team compositions, I'm completely on board with what he's doing with this tank Nocturne. He's getting the early game going, and then he's setting up kills for the high damage solo laners. That's how the team needs to really function. All right, so we're at that point now. Teammate up 2-1 in the series. It's time for Curse Academy to make some major adjustments. We talked about how they haven't really attempted to dismantle the, the mm -hmm. team composition. They, we've, he's been comfortable on Nocturne every game. So yeah. maybe time to switch up some of those, some of those target bands. Perhaps. It's really, really hard for Curse Academy right now. I've seen, I think it was the last uh, Challenger Series playoffs. When they start losing, they do kind of go on tilt a little bit. Uh, the one thing that you have to do in a best of five series, if someone's beating you, playing the exact same champion every time, may as well try to throw a wrench into that. Whether that be a Nocturne ban, uh, maybe a Nocturne ban. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we'll see. Hopefully with having a few of those veterans on Curse Academy who have come from the LCS and have gone through mm -hmm. best of series, they'll have the ability to regroup a little bit and come back strong in the fourth game. We do, however, have to take another short break. And when we return, Team 8 will make its bid to take the title in the best of in summer. It's game four right after this. Don't go anywhere. And now Impactful is back the to the chase. Chance. They find Maple. There's a knockup. Kills for Yasuo all day, every day. There's got to be one on fight right now. Going though, great Vicious takes a whole bunch of damage. He will revive, and Bunny Poopa goes down. They killed Impactful him. does as well. They look for Maple, but there's the oh, shark. Down goes Impactful. Chris Low health. St. Vicious will revive. Cali Troll still alive. Chris goes down.